Muslim community from others. And in this context, I know we were in the last particular question. I think we received Andrew Baxter from uh, Newcastle upon Tyne. Thank you very much for your question. And in that relation, Imam Saab, if I could first come to you, is this whole concept which we certainly are passionate about, which is, of course, the noble institution of Khilafat. And Andrew actually writes, uh, how does the system of Khilafat in Amdiya Jamaat work? Surely the role of the Khalifa, who is your ruler, he states in his question, clashes with the role of head of state or country where your communities exist. How is this clash avoided? Well, I think it's a very important uh, point, no doubt. And uh, this is uh, the most distinguishing feature, to my mind, about the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat. Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat is the one which is the only Muslim uh, denomination within the body of Islam which has got this uh, blessing from Allah Almighty which is known as Khilafat, the Caliphate. And by Caliphate it means that uh, after the demise of the founder of the community who was a subordinate prophet to the Holy Prophet وسلم, according to the prophecy of the Holy Prophet وسلم, which he explained in his writing a few years before his demise. He said that according to this prophecy, the system of Khilafat is going to successorship is going to be established in our community. So exactly that is what happened. Are we unique in this? Is the we are very community unique. We are unique? the unique because there is no other Muslim denomination at this time which may say that we have got a Khilafat in them. Yes, there are some people who are very keenly aspiring to have one. They are very desirous of having them. They say that, well, let's sit together, let's do something, let's, let's pick, pick up somebody. And they have been trying in the past, picking various people mm -hmm. and trying to, you know, prompt them to claim to be the Khalifa, but nothing worked. Actually, the point is, which these people totally omit, that Khalifa, the successor to a prophet, he is the one who is appointed by God Almighty. It is not appointed by people. We say that the election of the Caliph takes place in the community. But actually, the fact of the matter is that it is Allah Almighty who actually selects that man. The selection is already made in the knowledge of God, in the scheme of uh, divine scheme already there. What the election committee does is that the same uh, decision of God Almighty becomes manifest through their opinion and their verdict. But actually, it is the choice of God. It is not the choice of man. So these people who are trying to appoint someone and select someone and say, ask him that you become the caliph, actually they totally miss the point. They say as if it is an institution which is man-made mm -hmm. through the election, through campaigns, through proposing the names and supporting and opposing and some people. And just from that campaign's point, I mean, there is no campaign. There is no campaign. There is no such, I mean, when the decision is from God mm -hmm. and that decision is going to be manifested, the members of the electoral college, we have an electoral college in the community. Whenever such occasion comes, people are convened and they hold the meeting. But that atmosphere is so charged spiritually that there is no such question of anybody even uttering the name of anyone who could be the possible next Khalifa. It is not mentioned. It is all in their hearts, in their minds, which are entirely uh, controlled by God Almighty. And when the moment comes, then that divine verdict, which is already there, that emerges so beautifully that all the people, they bow down to that and pledge their initiation at the end. And that was demonstrable that was uh, here. in 2003. You know, we have seen with our own eyes, you know, yes. in uh, 2003, the when the fourth uh, Khalifa passed away, and uh, immediately after that, the election took place. And the whole world is witness how it took place. Mm -hmm. And immediately when the Khalifa was chosen, he was instantly made by the will of Allah Almighty, with his command, the spiritual and the administrative head of the Jamaat. I just like to mention one very small incident which has been mentioned many times and I think the viewers of MT must have seen it many times that when the new Khalifa was elected, Hazrat Khalifa al-Masih Khamir Sayyidahullah Ta'ala bin Aslaziz, just minutes, couple of minutes after that, he saw many people standing in the mosque and addressing them, he said, sit down. And that voice was carried out to all the people around the mosque. I think you were I, I was one there, of them. Yes. I think all yeah, of you were I there. think all of us were present. So yeah. the whole area around the London Mosque were filled with people. Thousands of people were there. And the whole proceeding was being watched on television. When the new Khalifa appointed, he said, sit down. All the people, they sat down. Just like a open field of a crop, you know. When the wind comes, mm -hmm. the, all the crops, you know, it lies down. So just like that, 
instantly all of them, whether they could find a place or not, but they sat down. Maybe sitting on top of somebody else, but they sat down. So much so that even some people told me later on that we were watching this proceeding in Australia, in Japan, in Singapore, in Africa, in Middle East, or India, Pakistan, mm -hmm. wherever they were. And most of the people, they were standing in their excitement as to what is happening. So they were standing. And when they heard the Khalifa sit down, they said, we sat wherever we are. So the whole world of Ahmadiyya was total obedience. submissively, in total yeah. obedience, they sat down. And just so taking, this is, that, this is what Khalifa taking that concept, Dr. Zaid, I mean, just focusing on, Andrew writes in his email, the role of the Khalifa, who is your ruler? Perhaps you can sort of clarify exactly what Khalifa's role is and then why. I mean, I get it, I'm sure, sure. everyone else does about this, that you, they, you know, friends of you will say you have such obedience and reverence towards the Khalifat. What is it? What does it mean to you? I think if you? I can take that a yeah. step, step back first, because what I'd like just to mention here is that uh, this uh, obedience and unity that we see in the Ahmadiyya community is certainly because of Khilafat and nothing but Khilafat. And why the other Muslims have not been able to create Khilafat is, as Imam Sahib has said, that Khilafat is not created by man, it is created by Allah. But even before that, they have to have prophet. This is Khilafat on the precepts of prophethood. Mm -hmm. So you have to have a prophet that has to come down and then the Khilafat follows on from that. And this is where the Ahmadiyya community is distinguished from other sects in that the promised Messiah according to the prophecies of the Holy Prophet وسلم, uh, was a, 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 a prophet of God. He was a non-law bearing prophet and this is why the Khilafat that has followed is within the realms of Islam and that is why but just, just if I may for clarification for our viewers just pick up on that point the distinct nature whilst it is following the Prophet just to pick up on that because indeed some other Muslims often challenge the Jamaat on that particular concept of the prophethood of Hazrat Masih what was you know just for the clarity what was the basis of him clearing, declaring as such and then the Khilafat following it. This wasn't well, something which was man-made, it was divinely decreed. That's right, this, this, this was divinely decreed that in the latter days uh, the promised Messiah and Mahdi would uh, arise and we know that he would arise from within the body of Islam, he would be a Muslim who would uh, carry out the renaissance, the reformation of the Muslims who had uh, gone away from Islam mm -hmm. and that his, uh, faith had ascended to the Pleiades. So this was all in, in um, fulfillment of the prophecies of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mm -hmm. that despite us believing that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the Khatm al Which we do. Which we and do the unequivocally because of, that. Yes. And, and that he was the seal of prophets. But the door of revelation has not been closed. So Allah is uh, ever living. He has not died and he still talks with uh, his chosen ones. And the revelations that the Promised Messiah was repeatedly receiving were of this nature that he said that God, out of his favors and because of my obedience and my love for the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has exalted me to a status of prophethood. But I bring nothing new, I have no new law, I have no new book, but I have been sent to carry out the reformation of Islam. So that was the Nabuvat, the prophethood of the Promised Messiah and that is within the laws of Islam that we believe that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu gave these prophecies and there are many of, uh, of this uh, that he said that in the latter days a prophet would, would come and there is no prophet between me and that prophet. So he had given many indications of that is a vast subject perhaps of course, it would be yeah. wise to deal with yeah. it in, in another just program.